Greetings YouTubers, it's the big fella here, Big Jim, driving around in his London Taxi International TX2 on a 2000 and plate and I've got a little secret to share with you, I think I told a bit of a lie, I've been telling you it's uh, done 160,000 miles on the clock because that's what I perceived and believed when I bought it and I actually lied because what I've done is straight away I'm not interested really in the mileage apart from telling you lovely people out there um, what I've done is um, I turned it straight on the odometer on because it's all electric on this and I turned it straight from total mileage to um, distance mileage over a given you know zeroed it back so I could check the fuel consumption and that's where it's remained so I've been telling you I've done 160,000 plus miles and the other day I was tinkering around and cleaning the dashboard and giving it a bit of a shine and a wipe through cleaning all the glass up or the perspex and uh, I'm going to straighten you up that's better and as I was doing it I sort of touched the the little electronic button there that's right in the middle of the dashboard a little brown one and it uh, flicked onto the actual miles and I was bloody shocked it was 286,000 miles um, and I went geez I've just put 26,000 miles on this car overnight so that's probably more like the truth although we still don't really know 100% because we really don't know if this is the original engine still in here knocking about but it's yet 286,000 and blah 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 and counting so uh, even more even more reasons to go wrong and talking of going wrong do you remember back a couple of videos ago ladies and gentlemen guys and girls I told you about the drip 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 of the power steering um, that was a hose that was like um, goes down between the steering rack the high pressure side and the power steering pump these power steering units are a uh, a law to themselves in fact if you look at it online on YouTube uh, they're quite an intricate little thing or a big thing in this case on these because they're semi-commercial on how they work I won't bore you with the intricacies and I must admit after looking at it at YouTube it sort of confused me I had to keep on looking over it so basically I thought that this strip had been completely cured i would managed to get the high pressure hose back on and uh, we had full pressure up and everything felt really lovely <coughs> on the uh, on the steering lovely job done well the other day I pulled out my driveway and I noticed <coughs> behind my driveway just as I pull off just before I go into the main road that there was a, like a, a good few drips of look like oil or that and I thought well where the bloody hell was that come from so I sort of thought well I back back in that position all the time so I sort of had a quick look underneath couldn't see anything so I'd only just started the vehicle up early to go to work during the week and I have to do a sort of hard lock right in my driveway to get out into the main road so I sort of done the same manoeuvre, done a hard lock, hard lock from cold, run out, look down the front of the car, and I'll tell you what, it was pissing like a tap. It was in the same place, uh, near side, front, up underneath really the, uh, the headlight, and it was pumping out. And I thought, oh, Jesus. So anyway, I got it into work, managed to get some time out to have a look at it underneath, and what's happened is the power steering box. Now, i got a feeling what's happened here is, obviously this, that's a pressurised system. It's pressurised from, um, obviously the engine running, it pressurises itself up, we know that which helps you in assist on a bar that actually helps you turn the steering on the steering rack now 
I've got a feeling, excuse me, I've just got on the gates and roundabouts here. I've got a feeling that that was weeping somewhat, just a little bit, but it was relieving the pressure in the whole system by leaking. Although it was peeing out from the hose just a little bit, I have now shut that off now by completely sealing that high pressure side. So now, the pressure has actually rose within the whole sealed system and it's found its next leakiest week. Next leakiest week. Uh, its next weakest link. And that next weakest link just happens to be, damn nabbit, the seals. The seals in the, someone's just waved to me there. I haven't got a clue who that is someone that obviously loves a taxi or knows me it's the seals inside the power steering pump now why I'm probably sure it's the seals is that when I start up from cold and go on lock it starts peeing out all its fluid bypassing the seals once everything's warmed up and the box is heated there's been some faults obviously left and right those seals soften up because they're not cold and then they then make a almost perfect seal so hence no leakage once it's warm does it on cold 10 minutes later you'll, you won't see hardly anything possibly just the odd drip so it's the power steering pump so I furtively thought, jibida, looking at the size of the power steering pump on here, we ain't talking about the size of an orange. We're talking about probably the size of a, a small car battery. Do you know those little smaller car batteries? About the size of that. And it's a big old lump to go on there. Now again, I've gone into the forums and uh, as I'm a member of a few of them, had a look in there, it's pretty straightforward. There's only so many models, and as you know, TX1, TX2s are basically the same. And I can get, I've got two choices here. I can get a second hand one <coughs> with an unknown culture and factor on it that how long's that bugger gonna last? Um, probably can pick one of those up for about 60, 70 quid. Or there's three, there's three options actually. Or I can buy an O-ring kit that basically I'll go into it, take it all to pieces and all apart, put this O-ring kit in, uh, all the seals, it comes with all the O-rings and the seals and basically seal it up. That'll probably be after I strip the other one down just to make sure that uh, there's a lot of cog gear inside it that that hasn't sort of broken off and caused damage which I don't think it has because I haven't got any noise or labouring on, on any part of the steering but anyway that could be like that so that's my option two and my option three here is to purchase a new one now if I purchase a new one I imagine they're reconditioned and I've looked online and I can get one for about 160 quid. Um, that's with a guarantee. It's probably going to be about a couple of hours to fit as well. So they're my three options. Now, stripping down one of those pumps after looking online is a right messy job. Um, you can imagine they've been they've been basically just it's probably the original one again on here um, and it's just it might have even been weeping from the day I bought it I don't know but what's happened is it's bloody leaking fortunately not all the time but that's all gonna change obviously in winter it's gonna take longer to warm up it's lovely and hot out here at the moment as you can see on a Saturday morning at 10 past 11 as I'm stuck in traffic as always on the 259. So 
in the winter it's going to be worse so it's got to be done it is a priority job but it don't have to be done like yesterday it's still drivable now now i've driven this from the amount of time that i've been talking to you what's that about 10 or 12 minutes she'll be fine she'll be absolutely fine under there she'll be sealed now for the rest of the day hopefully it'll last so my options are like i said are those three options and i'm reckoning on well it, there aren't any options available i ain't going for a second hand one i don't fancy that stripped down one somehow the seals uh, and the o-rings i can buy the complete kit for about 25 quid but Honestly, uh, looking online of a guy that done a strip down on one, and being as I've never ever been, ever been anywhere near one, it's not that I don't think I could do it, but where I do think is it's going to be a messy job. And that oil is going to be awful in there. And they reckon the main cause of these bloody seals going, and they have said, follow the recommended um, uh, um, exchange let um, exchange times for um, the fluid uh, a flush and renewal and on these it's about 80,000 miles now what was drip what was dripping out from underneath me when I saw the other day was like black gold it looked like bloody oil that had just come out of the ground it was black so I think all that's been happening over the years is people have been just topping up the, uh, the power steering fluids, topping it up, topping it up, topping it up. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a firing on oh no, an ambulance coming down here at the moment. So they've been topping it up, topping it up, and it ain't been changed. So the viscosity of it alters, it becomes tar like inside. It really needs flushing right out. So that's what I'm going to do. When I put the new hose on, I must admit, I didn't flush all the system through. Perhaps I should have done, but it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. It's shot. So I'm going for the... I'm going for the, the power steering pump renewal option. This part's been ordered. It's going to be in by Tuesday. And then hopefully be fitted sometime the week or the weekend. And that'll be one less little problem sorted out. So that's another cost to add in the in the big scheme of owning a an ex London taxi. Um, remember what I said to you: you can't buy one of these like straight from the dealers, as it were. You cut your normal car, and it just goes on and on and never gives you an ounce. These are cars or vehicles, semi-commercial or commercial, that have done bloody high mileage. They have not been looked after. In fact, if you manage to find one that's been babied and as a single owner who's literally treated it like his own car, then you're going to be bloody lucky. Um, you're not going to you're not going to be able to just drive it and never ever look for a, a, a repair or anything like that. They're going to cost you a little bit of money. Uh, at the beginning at the start of your adventure together so this is just another one that's going to be totted up um, it'll have to go in um, a brand new steering pump unit about the size of that it is so that's it that's another little job that's gone gonna be have to be done not forgetting that I've still got the little radiator problem that still is just slightly weeping but it's nothing I'm really too concerned about. I did notice the other day as well. There's a little, there's a very small leak from from the actual drivetrain unit as well. But that is literally just a drip. I mean, it's a bit like the old British motor, but motorbikes, you know. If they didn't drip, if they didn't drip, there was something wrong with them, like you know, because they had no oil in. Um, <laughs> you're not going to get it perfect but there again you don't get one of these for a for a, a say an easy run um, once I'm hoping once I replace most of these parts then I'm gonna have a brilliant cab up in uh, up in the uh, to, to actually continue on and a lot less to sort of go wrong in the future because they'll only be doing very very low mileage uh, compared to what a compared to what a London taxi does 
Well, that's not not a woe. I suppose to some people that would be classed as a bloody woe. But, you know, it's something that I've factored in to this car or this taxi. I knew, I knew that it was going to cost a little bit to keep it going. And it's proved me right. Um, engine, touch wood at the moment. Touch wood or touch plastic. Um, engine oil was absolutely fine, staying at the right level. Gearbox oil was fine, staying lovely and clear. Gearbox pulling through all the gears, absolutely beautiful. And in fact, the temperature gauge as well, you know, just under normal, just on normal. Because right on the front of these, where you've got the oil cooler to assist you as well, because obviously to stop starting London traffic when the temperature go, goes up, they got two lovely big Kenlo type fans. And they are big buggers as well. And they, they sort of, they're channeled and funneled in to the fan, uh, sorry, to the radiator itself. So they, they cut in and cut out when you stop starting in traffic. And amazing how they just bring that temperature down just so, just slowly, but the temperature has never gone over halfway. So that's the good point, and I know the bodywork is good. I've just got to get all these little, these niggly, niggle, niggly little things sorted out. And hopefully, once that's done by winter, then uh, we can have a we can have a bloody good time together. I'm not getting stuck underneath the car doing radiators and practice today. In fact, the car needs a bad wash, but I'm not going to do that either because it's so hot. I still haven't got the clean or clay bar it. Um, so that's a big no-no as well. I won't be doing that until the weather gets a bit inclement. Oh, i tell you what I did get. Um, I got, because on my uh, Facebook account, um, the pictures are on there and pictures were on my uh, granddaughter's um, do that I done for her um, and of course all the parents were all asking about the cab and everything and uh, someone contacted me yesterday asking me if I would do a prom for them um, remember this is on classic insurance and it's not hire and reward now I have been looking and been told that you can't obviously directly charge for your services because that would invalidate obviously your insurance but you can say the money that you give me for this is a donation to allow me to work on the cab and keep this old classic car on the road now whether or not that's true or false and if I was standing in a court of law, I don't know if they would buy that. Perhaps any of you listening um, would like to make a comment down below and uh, let me know what you think about that, whether or not the validity of that, whether or not that would stand up in court, whether or not you could actually use that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not that I particularly... Anyway, I, I declined the offer uh, of someone wanting my services. Um, pure, purely for the fact that she's not clean enough and it was a last minute thing because the prom is the prom was last night and they only contacted me uh, Thursday, late Thursday so I wouldn't have had enough time to prep properly and get her all done anyway but it's interesting so if, if any of you uh, have got a comment on that if you'd like to put that underneath please I'll, uh, I'll feed back to you um, and uh, let you know what else happens apart from that everyone it's a Saturday and as I always say it's so beautiful the sun is out I mean I can't show you here I'm now cutting right through the Sussex countryside now I've got the downs up ahead of me and I tell you what it, everywhere's green the sun's burning down it's absolutely beautiful and I ain't at work so I'm going to cut this one off now. I'll let you know sometime next week how the uh, power steering affair uh, got on. I've still got a bit of a squeak 
on the uh, radius arm bush on this one on the driver's side it's not as bad as it was like I said it's been packed full of grease and probably the next move on that will be to replace those uh, the radius arm bushes um, but it's only a squeak it's just me being particular and wanting to get it all perfect anyway from the big fella in his London taxi international TX2 with 206 no not 260,000 282,000 miles on the clock and still counting Big Jim saying you all have a great weekend everyone out there because I know I will and I'm not doing too much I'm just enjoying life all right then it's been really great as always need your comments underneath the more comments I get the more listeners I get the more subscribers I get and you never know once I reach my first million I might be able to buy a fleet of these who knows a million I'll be lucky to get 50 all right ladies and gents catch you later lovely talking to you out of here bye